Hey, what's going on, guys? Brandon with Taylor's Fine Smoke Cooking. So nice to see your lovely faces on today. Today, we're going to be making some homemade Salisbury steaks. My wife was like, you know, babe, I would really love some homemade Salisbury steaks. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up for today. We're going to do that and probably make some homemade mashed potatoes to go with it as well. But this is a really a, a, a pretty simple recipe. Now, there to me is a difference between hamburger steaks and Salisbury steaks. And the biggest difference is in the texture. A hamburger steak is essentially like a, still a hamburger and the texture is still a little bit more uh, ground as opposed to the Salisbury steak is a little bit more fine. Now, growing up, you know, I'm sure all of us have eaten Salisbury steaks before. Some people liked them, some people didn't. I happen to like them then and I still kind of like them now, but this version is a lot better. So let me show you what we're going to be doing to make them right here. I have about two and a half pounds of ground beef. I have some crackers that I've pulverized in a food processor. We're going to use a couple eggs. I have some onion soup mix, salt, pepper, some complete seasoning. And in this uh, here, I put in a cup and a half of onion, about a tablespoon of garlic, and just about two teaspoons of milk. And this uh, took it and put in a food processor or in this little blender cup, and we blended it up to where it's almost like a smoothie. And we're going to go ahead and put this in a hamburger as well to incorporate it through. And then when we mix it up, we're going to mix it a little bit more than we normally would for a meatloaf. Because again, the texture of your Salisbury steak make, means a lot to me. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys. And, uh, so you can see our ground beef here. Like I said, it's two and a half pounds. 80-20, uh, you can use kind of pretty much whatever you want. Um, we're going to be cooking this part of the way. We're going to you know sear it off, not cook it all the way through, but we're going to finish cooking it off in the gravy so it kind of doesn't matter what particular um, grade beef you use it's totally up to you 90 you can use 90 10 85 15 73 20 80 20 it's kind of up to you so first thing i want to do just kind of want to break up our ground beef all righty and we're going to go in with a couple eggs Eggs are gonna be to help be a binder. You know, when you make a meatloaf, you're making your meatloaf in the oven. When you're making this, you're spear pan frying it and then basically braising it in gravy or cooking it off in gravy. And if you don't have a good enough binder, it will cause your hamburger or your Salisbury steaks to wanna to break apart. So, all right guys, sorry about that camera issues. The camera stopped on me for some reason. But what we did was we wound up putting our grip, our breadcrumbs in here along with our blended onion garlic and milk and then seasoned it up and we put our Lipton onion soup mix in here so again I used a cup and a half of onion a tablespoon of garlic and two tablespoons of milk we blended that up really fine we put that in our mix we used two eggs I had a cup and a half of ground cracker and then we used some complete seasoning salt and pepper and seasoned it up really well then we mixed it really well a little bit more than you would your general meatloaf and then we're going to go ahead on and go into the refrigerator and let it sit up for about 20 minutes or so before we come back and begin to form our patties and sear them off. So uh, sorry about that. Again, just wanted to keep you guys abreast of what we did do and what's going on. And I'll see you guys back in about 20 minutes. All right, guys, now it's time to go ahead on and sear up our Salisbury steak patties. I have a, just a very, very shallow pan of vegetable oil at the bottom here just to help uh, with nothing from sticking and to get the cooking, the, the process started. Here's my patty. And as, I don't know if you can tell on the camera or not, but I just have it into a nice thin oval shape. Uh, you know, generally how your Salisbury steak is shaped. So I wanted to kind of just mimic that. And that's why we have them shaped up like that. Pretty much you want to make sure that you have them pretty much the same thickness Alright guys, so I'm going to have these things in here for just about three minutes or so, starting with the first one. And we're just going to go ahead on and flip this bad boy over. Has a nice sear on it. That's what we're looking for because again, when we put our gravy and stuff in here, this is going to add a really nice flavor. And it's going to flavor them. So we're just continuing to sear off the other sides of our patties here. We're going to continue to do that until they're ready and I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, I certainly do apologize about that again. So what I did, I had the remaining oil from my hamburgers 
in the skillet. I added three tablespoons of butter to that as well. So we had a little bit over a quarter cup of liquid, that's oil and butter included. And then to that, I added the same amount of flour and we began to cook our flour down. I did add some mushrooms into this as well. So I just put in a cup of sliced baby bell mushrooms. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, you can leave those out. And we allowed our flour to cook for about four minutes or so, just to get that flour taste out of there. And as well as allow our mushrooms to get a little love in the bottom of the skillet here. So now what we're going to do, we're gonna go in and add in our beef stock. Right now, I have four cups of beef stock. This beef stock is flavored really well, so I'm gonna be really careful with the amount of salt that we put in to our gravy, and I may not add any at all. So once you put your stock in, it's going to begin to release and loosen up that flour that it thickened up, and it's gonna allow our gravy to start coming together. So um, the butter also adds a nice flavor, the butter we added, and it's gonna allow our gravy to be nice and silky uh, when it gets done. So what we're gonna do now, I didn't add in the full four cups, as you can see, but all I wanted to do was just begin to loosen up our flour or the little bit of roux we made for our gravy here. And you can see how it's beginning to thicken up really nicely. I don't want my gravy super thick for my Salisbury steaks. I'd rather have it a little bit thinner, but we did want to loosen it up some. So if you still need a little more liquid, after you add in your four cups of beef stock, if you have more stock, you can use stock, or you can just add water, because by this time, a lot of the flavor is already going to be in there, and this is really gonna be some flavored up gravy in the first place. Okay guys, so you can see now that our gravy is starting to come up to a really soft boil or soft simmer, and our gravy is beginning to thicken up really well. So this kind of gives me a gauge on how thick my gravy is going to be. It's still gonna thicken up a little bit, but again, I'm going to be get, still getting some residual juices and everything from our hamburger steaks here. So what I'm going to do now are from our Salisbury steaks. So now I want to do is begin to just start putting our steaks back into our gravy. Kind of move some of these mushrooms around. just to make room for our, the rest of our steaks here. Yeah. Alrighty. I can just tell how good this is going to be already. I'm excited about it. Okay. So now we just wanna go hit on everything and nice little toss in here. And you can see when I put my steaks in, it just about submerged my steaks. I want them. All right, guys, so we got everything in the pan here. The gravy's looking good. Everything is submerged. I did add just a little bit more stock just to make sure that all of our steaks were completely submerged. Again, if you don't have extra stock, you can use a little water or you can use chicken broth if you have some of that. So we're just going to continue to let it simmer here for about 20 minutes. Just to come, we'll come back, check our gravy, take, check the flavor. Make sure we don't need to add any more liquid or whatnot to it. But I'm just gonna cover this bad boy up and continue to let it go. We'll see you guys back All here. All right, guys, here are our, our, we're just our mashed potatoes. We keep it really, really simple. Um, I didn't, I'm not making a huge pot of them. So just enough for a couple servings. I may make some rice. I don't know if I want rice or mashed potatoes for my per, uh, self particularly, but all we're gonna do, we're gonna bring these up to a boil. Make sure that you salt your water really, really well. To me, that's the key to a good mashed potato is to have salted water uh, prior to you putting in your potatoes and boiling, making sure that the water is good and salty to season those potatoes as they cook. So that's all we're going to do. Family, we've allowed our Salisbury steaks to cook now for about 20 minutes. Now I just want to come in and check our gravy, see how it's tasting. You can see the consistency of that gravy. That is absolutely perfect as far as our consistency is concerned. If I do want to get a little taste. Mm, mm, mm. That, that is amazing. Woo, that's going to be good on some rice. All right, so all I want to do now, I want to go in. I just want to flip these Salisbury steaks over. 
I just want to give each side an opportunity to sit in this gravy and bathe in this gravy some. So we're just going to flip these bad boys over. Tell me they don't look good already. All right, continue to let it cook. About another 20 minutes or so, we're gonna be able to plate up. Our potatoes are coming along just fine, and just a little bit longer on those. Then I'll show you what the next step is to do with those. So you guys don't go nowhere. We'll be back here in just a moment. All right guys, so now we're gonna go ahead and put these potatoes together. I boiled them until they were fork tender, pulled them off. Now we're just gonna add in about four tablespoons of butter here. Remember, I did salt my water nice and heavily so I don't have to add a ton of salt to the potatoes when we get uh, done with them because we already salted the, uh, the water so well. And I got a hand mixer. I, under, I like to use a hand mixer and not add in any liquid beforehand. I go straight in with the butter and the uh, potatoes as they're cooked. Go with my hand mixer and begin to break everything down. Then we'll add a little bit of milk in after the fact. I just, I just, I've done this like this for I don't know how long, and it just always works best for me this way. If you don't want to use a hand mix, you most definitely can use a hand potato masher and do it, you know, the old-fashioned way. But I just seem to like it this way. Sometimes, depending on how long you boil your potatoes, you won't even have to add any liquid in. You can eat them just like they are. So I just like doing it this way. We're also going to season our potatoes up with a little black pepper and which is a, a hint more salt. Again, you don't have to add much because we salted our water so well. Now we're just gonna add in a little bit of milk to help get them nice and creamy. And that's about it. We're gonna go back in with our hand mixer just a little bit more and these things will be ready to rock. And our Salisbury steaks, they are done as well. Just look at that gravy, look at those steaks, nice and tender, super flavorful. I can't wait to dig in guys, let's go ahead and plate up. All right guys, so here is our meal, our homemade Salisbury steaks and mashed potatoes. Got a little bit of cream corn here and a nice biscuit on the side. You can see how good it looks. Let's go ahead and get a bite. And get... I don't know if you guys can get a good look at that. You can see how moist the steel is on the inside. Not dried out. You know, some people think that you can't dry out meat even when you braise it. But you can. So I want to let you guys see that it's still nice and moist but completely cooked on the inside. Let's go ahead and get some. Oh, I got that. Yeah. Amen. All right, guys. Mm. <laughs> that is so good. Nice and tender, like Salisbury steak is supposed to be. You can taste that onion in there and garlic, but it's not overly salty because you see we didn't put a ton of salt in it. This thing right here is spot on, guys. And I highly recommend that you try it. Hope you guys enjoyed the recipe. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Until the next time, God bless you. We'll see you around.